come back today we're going to be continuing talking about volume and surface area but today we're going to be talking about triangular prisms and all types of pyramids let's go ahead and take a look at some vocabulary so a quick vocabulary refresher remember that volume measures the capacity of an object this means that we can calculate how much space is inside the object or how much the object will hold and we can use a formula to calculate volume so now let's go ahead and take a look at example a so here at example A, it says Ronald is filling the jar with candy. How much space is in the jar? So we need to figure out how much space is in the jar. So let's determine whether that's going to be surface area of volume by looking through our problem and pulling out important information. So we can see here that Ronald is filling the jar and that we want to know how much space is in the jar. So those two things are going to indicate to us that we're talking about volume because we're talking about filling the shape up. So now we need to determine what shape we have, and we can see that we have a triangle on top and a triangle on the bottom. And since we have triangles, tops, and bottoms, we know that this is going to be a prism. Anytime that you have a flat surface on the top or a flat surface on the bottom, that's going to be a prism. When all the sides come to a point at the top, that's going to be a pyramid. So since all of our sides are flat, that's going to be a prism, and since our shape on the top is a triangle, that makes it a triangular prism. So now we're going to pull out our formula sheet and determine that volume is going to be equal to big B, capital letter B, times H. So we need to know what capital B means. Most of the time it means space, but since we're talking about capital B, anytime we have big B, we're going to talk about the area of the base. So anytime that we have big letter B, capital B is going to equal the area of the base. So now that we've figured that out, we need to figure out what the area of the base is going to be and times H, which is going to be height. So since the base of our shape is going to be a triangle, we're going to need the area formula for triangle to figure out the area of the base. If our shape was a square at the bottom, we would need area formula for square. If it was a rectangle, we need the area formula for rectangle, octagon, etc., etc. In this case, since it's a triangle, we need the area formula for a triangle. So that is going to be one half little b times h. So the little base of our triangle. So now let's figure out the two sides that we need, the base and the height of the triangle. So looking at the top, the bottom of my triangle here is going to be eight, and then the height of my triangle, how tall it is, is right here, that's going to be 15. You know it's not the 17 because across from the right angle is our hypotenuse, and our hypotenuse is neither the base nor the height, so we don't need that 17 right now. So we're going to do our base times our height. So we're going to have 1 half times 8 times 15. When we multiply that all together, we're going to end up getting 60. So now that I know that big B is 60, I can plug that into my main formula, and I just need the height of my prism. So since the height of the prism is going to be the line that connects the two bases together, that in this case is going to be this 6 here. This 6 that attaches the 15 and the 17 together is going to be my height. So I know that's going to be 6. So plugging that in my formula, I have 60 times 6. So 60 times 6 is going to be 360, and it's going to be inches because that's the measurement we have, and it's going to be cubed since we're talking about volume. That brings us to the end of this one, so let's go ahead and try example B. So here at example B, it says this container is filled with an unknown amount of jelly beans for a contest. How much space could the container hold? So again, we need to determine whether we're talking about volume or surface area. So going through our problem, let's find the important information that will let us know, since it's saying the container is filled with an unknown amount of jelly beans, and how much space could the container hold, we probably know that they're talking about volume because they're talking about how much is inside. So the next thing we need to determine is what type of shape this is. And since we can see that all of the sides come to a point at the top, that lets us know that we're talking about a pyramid. So we need our volume formula for pyramid. So our volume formula for pyramid is one third times big B times H. And again, as we talked about big B, big B is going to be the area of our base. So the area of our base. And since in this shape, our base is triangle shaped, 
just like the last one, we're going to need the area formula for a triangle. So the area formula for a triangle is going to be area equals one half little b times h. Now taking a look at our picture to figure out that little b, we have a picture of our base down there at the bottom. So they cut it out and showed us the base separately from the rest of the picture. So now that we have that, we need to figure out what the base and the height of our triangle is. So the bottom of our triangle here, or our base is six. The height of our triangle right here is 5.2. So now that we have those two numbers, we can plug them into our formula. So 1 half, 6 times 5.2. And when we multiply those all together, we're going to get 15.6. Again, you can use your calculator if you can't do that one in your head. So now that we have what big B is, we just need to know what the height of this pyramid is. And notice the height of the base is not the same as the height of the pyramid. We need to figure out how tall it is from the bottom of the pyramid to the top. The good news is they told us, they said this pyramid is 16 inches tall. And since they told us how tall the pyramid is, we can use that number for our height in our formula. So we're gonna plug in one third times 15.6, the big B that we just figured out, and 16 since that's the height of the triangle. When we multiply those all together, we're gonna get 83.2 inches. And since we're talking about volume, this is inches cubed. Now let's take a look at the next example. This example says Hasbro is attempting to package the new transformer figure, how much space is inside the box. So again, the first thing we need to do is figure out whether we're talking about area, surface area or volume. And since they're talking about how much space is inside the box, we know that we're talking about volume. So now we need to figure out what type of shape we have to work with. And since we know that it's coming to a point at the top, we know that we're talking about a pyramid. However, in all of the other pyramids that we talked about, they were triangular and because of their base being a triangle. This time, our base appears to be a square, although not drawn to size. It does look like a square or a rectangle. A rectangle, a square is a rectangle. So now we need to use that information going forward. So our volume formula for a pyramid is one third big B times H. And remember that big B stands for the area of our base. And that's gonna be important here because our base is a different shape than a triangle. This time our shape is a rectangle or a square. So our formula for that is going to be length times width because that's the area formula for a rectangle or a square. So in this case, our length is six, our width is six. So our formula is going to be six times six and six times 36 is gonna give us 36. So now that we've figured out big B, we can plug that in once we know the height of our pyramid and since we have a line going straight up and down on the inside that's telling us the height is going to be 10, we know that's going to be the height of our pyramid. So now we can plug that in and we're going to have 1 third times 36 times 10. We can multiply those all together and when we do that we're going to get 120 centimeters and again since we're talking about volume this is going to be cubed. Now let's take a look at our next example. So here we are at example D and it says in 2015, Nike released their Air Mag shoes. The box needed graphics for the outside of the box. So how much space is available for graphics on the box? So the first thing we need to figure out is if it's surface area or volume. And since they're talking about needing graphics on the outside of the box or things that are gonna be on the box, we know that they're talking about surface area. So now we need to determine what shape we have. And since we have a flat top and a flat bottom, that are both triangular shape, we know that we have ourselves a triangular prism. So we need our surface area formula for a tri triangular prism. So our formula for that is gonna be SA, or surface area, is equal to height times P, where the P is gonna stand for perimeter, plus two times big B. And remember that our big B is going to be area of the base. And in this case, the area of our base is going to be the triangle formula since we have a triangular base. So let's start with that since we know what that is going to look like. So we know that we've got one half big or little b times little h. So we need to figure out what the height of our triangle and then the base of our triangle is. So remember, we're going to look for the one that is opposite or the one that is not the hypotenuse. So the bottom of our triangle is going to be eight and the height of our triangle is going to be 15. So we know that we're gonna be doing eight 
times 15 times 1 half to give us big B. And when we do that, multiply them all together, we're going to get 60. So now we've got big B. We need to figure out the height of our triang or triangular prism. So again, that's going to be the side that connects the two bases together. So this 6 here connects the two triangular bases together. So that's going to be our height. So now we just need to figure out our P, or our perimeter. And our P is going to be the perimeter of the base. So when we're looking for perimeter, we're looking for perimeter of the base. So we're going to be trying to figure out the base of the triangle, what is the perimeter for that. So we're going to be adding up all of the sides of our triangle. So that's going to be the 8, the 15, and then for our hypotenuse, we need to add the 17. So we need to add those three sides together to find our perimeter. So our perimeter is going to be 8 plus 15 plus 17. And when I add those all together, my perimeter is going to be 40. So now that I've got my big B, now that I've got my perimeter, and now that I've got my height, I now have all the things that I need for my formula. So I'm going to have 6 times 40 on one side for the height times the perimeter, plus 2 times 60 on the other side. Now remember, I have to follow the order of the operations when I'm working with my formula. So I have to make sure that I have to do one side of multiplication first, and then the other side of multiplication before I can add them together. So 6 times 40 is going to give me 240, and 2 times 60 is going to give me 120. So notice there's an extra step there where I do the multiplication because I can't do the addition yet. That comes after multiplication in my order of operations. So 240 plus 120 is going to give me 360. And since we're talking about inches and we're talking about area, that's going to be inches squared. Now let's take a look at our final example. So here we are at example E, and it says, K Jewelers is trying a new box for their open hearts collection. How much wrapping paper will be needed to cover the box? So again, we need to determine, are we talking about surface area or volume? And since they're talking about wrapping paper that will be needed to cover the box, we know that we're going to be talking about surface area. So then we needed to figure out what shape we have, and since all of our things come to a point at the top, then we know that we're talking about a pyramid. So we need to pull our surface area formula for a pyramid. So surface area is 1 half L times P plus big B. The L is going to be our slant length. The P, as we talked about, is going to be the perimeter of the base. And then big B is going to be the area of the base, which we talked about. So now let's take a look at some important information. However, nothing on our picture is going to help us out. Instead, they've written a little paragraph below there to give us important information. So we have to go through that paragraph and determine the things that we need. So it says a triangular pyramid has a slant length of 5 inches. So they've given us the slant length. That's important. Each side of the base is going to be 6 inches. So again, that's going to be important information. And the area of the base is going to be 15.9 square inches. So they've given us the area of the base. So the good news is we don't have to calculate big B. They already told us what big B is. They said it's going to be 15.9. So we figured out big B, we didn't have to do any calculations, they gave it to us, that was nice. However, we are gonna figure out what the slant length is and what the perimeter is. But good news, they already told us what the slant length is, they said that was five inches, so we don't have to worry about that. So the only thing we need to calculate is the perimeter because they didn't give us that. So we need to figure out what our perimeter is gonna be. And since our shape is a triangular pyramid, we're just gonna be adding up the three sides of the triangle's base to figure out what the perimeter is going to be. And in this case, each side of the base is six inches. It told us that. And since we have three shapes, three shapes, three sides in our triangle, we're going to be doing perimeter equals six plus six plus six. We're adding up the three sides of our triangle. So six plus six plus six is going to give me 18. So that's our perimeter. So now we have everything that we need. So we know we're going to have one half times five, which was the slant length, times 18, which is the perimeter. We just figured that out plus big B, which is going to be 15.59, they gave us that information. Now again, we have to make sure that we're using the order of operations here, so we're going to have to do all of the multiplication on this side first before we go ahead and add. So we're going to take 1 half times 5 times 18, and when we do that, we get 45 plus our 15.59. Then we're going to add those two together, and we're going to get 60.59 inches squared, because again, we're talking about surface area. That brings us to the end of this video. So if you like this video, go ahead and throw us a thumbs up. If you love this video, go ahead and throw us a sub, and we will catch you in the next one.